Born in from a very long, skinny Airbnb. Over the last few years, my work has evolved to be very like outdoors and hiking focused. And that's a development that I am very okay with. Being outside is good for you. And the earth just has a unique talent for creating unbelievable visuals. But capturing the outdoors comes with a unique set of challenges. So in this video, I wanna take you on a fun little hike and share with you some of my best advice for taking photos and creating videos in the outdoors. And I figured what better opportunity to do so than the first winter storm of the season here in the Smoky Mountains. Let's start with one that I wish I didn't have such a perfect example for this morning, which is just doing your research. This will not only help you to make sure that you're not missing any fees or permits that might be required, it'll also help you to know if you need to change your plans. Remote roads and trails are not necessarily open all of the time. They can close due to obviously like snow or ice, but also other factors like wildfires or erosion or trail maintenance. Most national parks will post their road updates on their website or on Twitter. So before I came out this morning, I've checked the Great Smoky Mountains National Park Road Updates Twitter feed and confirmed that the original trail I had intended to do this morning is not gonna be accessible because of the winter storm. So I've rerouted to a different trail that will be open, that will you know, hopefully should be open, and we're doing that instead. And I would have wasted like a couple hours of driving had I not checked and known that. And if you wanna check the status of a trail that you're gonna be hiking on, you can try checking Park Service website, the Forest Service website, they have most trails listed on one of those, or even checking all trails, which is open source, so either a moderator or just someone who's gone to that trail recently will post and let you know if it's been closed. The majority of the time this won't be a problem and wherever you want to go is probably going to be open, but in the event that it's not, it's much better to spend a couple minutes checking before you go than to spend a couple hours um, changing your plans on the spot. Now, before we hit the trail, we do need to talk a little bit about gear, and this is something I normally kind of skip over in my videos, but when it comes to shooting in the outdoors, there are certain tools that are useful if not indispensable. Some of this is pretty self-explanatory, like making sure that you have proper clothing, that you pack plenty of food and water for a hike, but some of it is a little bit less obvious. You should have a headlamp and a first aid kit and bear spray if you're in an area with bears. And if you're hiking in an area that could be icy, then you should try investing in some micro spikes to put on your boots so you're not sliding all over the place. It's also very beneficial to keep your camera set up as slim and simple as possible. Mine, most of the time, is just a camera and a lens. No gimbals or anything too fancy. A tripod and a microphone if I'm shooting something like this, but this is as complicated as it ever gets. Now that we have this beautiful fog rolling in as we're getting up higher, I thought this would be a good time to talk to you about predicting the weather, which is a huge part of shooting anything outside. Obviously, you want to be going out ideally when the weather is going to be best. Today, it's ridiculously simple. There's snow, so I'm gonna go out today and try to see the snow, but when there's not snow, the other 99% of the time, my process is still pretty simple and it's just following rain. Rain brings really interesting conditions like fog and cloud inversions, low clouds, really vivid dynamic light, and following it around shooting during or after rain is how you're most likely to get those really good conditions. The most interesting conditions also tend to happen in the early morning around sunrise. That's when you're most likely to get like the mist and the low clouds and the best light, of course. And the best weather, in my opinion, happens when you combine the two. So if I look at the forecast and I see that it's gonna be raining all night and then clear up in the morning, absolutely gonna do whatever I can to go out and shoot that morning because chances are it's gonna be an incredible sunrise. In addition to the weather, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure you know where and when the sun is going to rise and set at the spot you're shooting. So obviously this isn't a big deal today because we can't see the sun regardless, but if you're shooting like a sunrise or a sunset, then it's crucial. Before you shoot, you should check like a map and see which direction your location faces. Obviously if the sun rises and there's a giant mountain in the way, then it's not gonna be much of a sunrise. You should probably come back for sunset when you can get the light behind you 
hitting that mountain. You can dial this in even more when you get to the location. So I use an app on my phone called PhotoPills that uses augmented reality to show you exactly where the sun is going to be at certain times of day. So you can use it like before sunrise to see exactly where the sun's gonna come up on the horizon. Very helpful for shooting like a time lapse, framing that up, or deciding how you should shoot. Sign. Ooh. Cheers. Ice coffee in the most literal sense. I'm always very happy to see this sign because it means I can turn left and then the trail begins to level out from here on. Very much looking forward to that. While I take this break and enjoy my coffee made out of ice, um, I thought we could do a little ad break as well and thank the sponsor of this video, which is of course ArtGrid. ArtGrid is a massive library of amazing stock footage shot by filmmakers all over the world with new material added all the time. Legend has it, it's every single day. I use their footage in pretty much all of my projects. There's probably some in this video somewhere and there's a few reasons I like it. For one, they really simplify the license process. They have one license that covers everything like personal use, commercial use, clients use of the footage, no limitations on like the number of views or the audience size you can share their footage with. And even if you end your subscription, keep this on the DL, but even if you end your subscription, you can still use the footage that you downloaded. Within that one license, they do have three different plans that basically just determine the quality of footage you can download. So for just $25 a month, you can download any of their footage in HD. For $40 a month, you can download it in 4K or 8K. And for $50 a month, you can download it in log. And a lot of the footage can even be downloaded in raw. So if you wanna add an overlay of your own footage, access footage you wouldn't be able to capture yourself, or even just fill in the gaps for something you forgot to get on location, ArtGrid is the place to go. So there will be a link in the description of this video where you can sign up and get an additional two months completely free. Thanks ArtGrid for supporting this channel and helping me to invest in some new gloves soon because I swear my fingers are about to fall off. <laughs> So you can see we've made it to the lookout at the summit, we're up above the clouds. It's absolutely breathtaking and ridiculous, but the sun is setting to a degree and I want to make it back to the trailhead before my car turns into an actual icicle. So let's rapid fire through a final couple of pointers here before we head back down and get through the rest. First, it's very important to follow the landscape's lead. This could mean adjusting your location or your plans to follow the best weather, or just adjusting a shot based on the light. It's easy to look at photos online and get certain expectations for what the shots or the weather or the angles are gonna be like, and then most of the time you show up and it doesn't quite go to plan. And you have to know that the best results are going to come from going with what the landscape gives you and going based off of that so you can get the best results in the context of what you actually get because you never know what you're gonna get until you show up. It's also important that you don't just shoot wide. I mean this in a literal sense, like don't just use a wide angle lens all the time, use some different tighter focal lengths as well, but I also mean it in a more figurative sense. Like at a location like this, it's easy to just gravitate towards shooting like the big wide Vista, and that's fine, get that shot too, but there's so many other details that you should start to pick out and notice a little more acutely. So while I've been up here, my eyes really been drawn to these trees, the way they kind of fall off into the fog underneath me. So I slapped on the 85 millimeter lens and got a nice close up shot of those. All right, it's freezing, we're running out of time. So let's pack up, get the hell out of here, head back to the car. Ooh. 
Long hike. Now, the outdoors can be a pretty hostile place for cameras and lenses, so it might be worth taking some precautions during and after your shoot to try and ensure the health and well-being of your gear. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm not exactly a role model when it comes to taking care of cameras, but I will show you one precaution that I usually take, which is just to leave everything out to dry after a rainy or snowy day. So a lot of like moisture can build up inside of your cameras and lenses when you're out shooting in the rain. So when I get back to like the Airbnb, the hotel, wherever I'm staying for the night, I'll just space everything out, out of my camera bag, leave it out and let it dry off, let all that moisture get out of there. And I'll also do this on kind of a smaller scale when I'm driving between locations. I'll put my camera bag in the back seat and just make sure that it's unzipped, make sure that it's opened up. That way it has some room to dry out, aerate a bit, and your cameras and lenses aren't in there just like marinating. Some people take this a lot further, taking like umbrellas on hikes so they can cover their camera while it's shooting if they're in the rain or the snow. I obviously don't do that, you don't have to do that, but it's important to be aware of the risks that you're putting your camera and lenses and other gear um, at stake of. And, you know, maybe take some precautions to uh, mitigate those risks. All right, so I'm wrapping everything up now, getting ready to hit the sack, which I'm absolutely looking forward to. At the moment, it has been a long day, long but rewarding day out making this video, and I'm importing all the footage from today, and it reminded me of my final piece of advice for you in this video. One of the most important ones, which is to go back to locations multiple times. The hike in today's video is one that you may have seen in some of my videos or posts before because I've actually done it four times now. And I wanted to show you just the difference between the conditions and the angles and the different photos that I got each time. Because I've been four times now and it's been completely different every time as for what I walked away with. So the first time I did this trail was almost two years ago and these were the images I got. Very like foggy, mystical type vibe. Um, but there was no view at the top. So I went back in the winter in hopes of not only getting the snow but also getting some views at the top. Well, there was snow but no views at the top. So I went back this summer in hopes of once again, maybe just getting those views at the top and got eh, a little bit kind of stormy clouds floating through the valley, but still couldn't quite see the mountains. And then today I went back in hopes of getting both. All of the views of the mountains around, as well as the snow on the peaks. And it worked, but honestly, the craziest part is that I'll probably be back a fifth time because it's just a really cool trail. It's not only good exercise and fun to get outside and do a long hike like that for the day, but I get something a little different as for videos and photos every time. And that ties into kind of an overarching theme of this whole thing, which is just caring about the outdoors, being interested, being curious. I know plenty of filmmakers and photographers who are out hiking a lot, they're in the outdoors a lot, but it's mostly just a means to an end. It's a way to get cool footage and photos. And that's fine, but if you're able to be interested in the places you're visiting, to learn about the location, the geological features, the history, and to go hiking and be outside, not just as a way to get a nice photo, but because you genuinely enjoy the process, you're actually invested in it, and to actually just care about the subjects that you're capturing and sharing, it's not only beneficial for the outdoors, but for you. It brings so much more depth and meaning to the work you're creating. So that's my rant for the day. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Definitely one of my favorites in a while, and I'm now going to wind down and hit the sack for the night. But first, I gotta import the rest of this footage. So give me your SD card. Cheers.